Today's topic, keep the first while you move on to the second. Hi, I'm Doug Holt with author of Your Own Story, and this is your Daily Growth Hack, where each day we give you a tip, trick, or insight to help you up-level what we call the five to thrive. That is your mind, your body, your soul, your relationships, and your business. I was having a conversation with a young entrepreneur, and what he was telling me was he actually moved on to his third business. But the problem he was having is his second and first business had actually had to be closed down because they weren't becoming successful anymore. Now, they used to be widely successful. When he started with his first, he worked his tail off, learned the ins and outs of business and what it took to run a business, and actually was able to scale it, and then freed his time and used his capital that he had gained from the first business, the money he made, and applied it in a second business, which I think is actually really smart. And then he did the same thing with the second business. But while he was building a second business, his first business started to diminish, right? It started to go down because it was lacking his focus and attention. And it just needed that to grow. It wasn't set up properly. It was set up on a shaky foundation. And then we did the same thing from a second business to his third. And the third business actually started to do well, but at the, the price of the second and the first. And now today he was talking to me and he was asking me, Doug, you know, how do I actually you know, manage this? Like, I, I want to go to the fourth business now, but I'm worried about the third and I just keep going and going. And I was talking to him. I said, look, you can't. You can, but you shouldn't. If you want to be the author of your own story and really live a digital lifestyle and be able to travel and do the things that you want to do. Now, this was his story that he related to me. You want to keep that first and second business thriving. And the key is to set the first business up almost like you were going to scale it in the sense of a franchise. So it's able to be taken over by somebody else and you are able to pull yourself out of that business. At one point, then you need to put somebody else in place. So put a manager or another CEO is a common way that you can do that into place of your business while you're moving on to your second so they stay stable. So there's key performance indicators or KPIs that are in that first business so you know the health status of the business. You still should be relying on that business, or not relying, but you should be looking deep into the business and just so you know what's going on. And then do the same thing with the second business if you're that lucky. And if you're lucky enough to have two businesses and work on to number three, great. But the key is to have the infrastructure in place so the businesses don't run you and you're able to run them. And for me, I found the best way of doing that is systematizing my business. Uh, Great books on that. Real basic one is the E-Myth. Another one is Checklist Manifesto. Highly recommend those. Um, But also then hiring the right people and training them and investing in them and making sure they have ownership uh, of the business uh, before you move on to another one. So there there is a stream of revenue coming in. Uh, in 2007, a lot of people got hit, and one of the reasons they got hit was the fallen economy. But what I'd noticed when I was talking to a lot of my very wealthy clients is they had multiple streams of revenue coming in. Some of those were real estate, some of those were investments, uh, and some of them were having multiple businesses coming in. So if one got affected, uh, the others would actually pick up the slack or really be able to um, keep them keep them invested in the income-producing opportunities that were available to them. And of course, with those people, they were able to jump on price structures, right? So homes, especially, and other businesses that were going out, they were able to buy them very cheaply at discounted rates. Uh, So that really opened my eyes and really made made me want to think about how I could scale my businesses in the sense of having multiple businesses running, um, and but also making sure I don't leave number two in this guy's scenario, number two and number one. So keeping them all thriving during that transitionary period if possible. Now, what I want you to think about if you don't have a business or have no aspirations of owning your own business, where else do you do this in your life? Like where do you go from one fitness goal to another, but at the detriment of the first goal? So um, I'm going to use a typical one that I hear from men all the time, wanting to bench press 300 pounds right? So maybe you bench press 300 pounds, you've got this newfound strength, and then you want to be more flexible. So you start doing yoga, you start doing some dynamic flexibility, some tissue work, but you forget about the bench press. You're no longer maintaining that goal and you actually get very weak. You get a lot of muscle atrophy that comes on. Uh, There's ways you want to do is really focus your program so you can keep that base layer. You've hit this huge goal and this newfound strength and you want to keep it as you're getting more flexible um, during that time. I've certainly found myself guilty of this, Um, but also in relationships. Where are you focused on one relationship, but you do that at the detriment of other ones? Maybe your family, if you have a new love relationship. So what I encourage you to do right now is grab your your journal, write out your five to thrive, and where have you sacrificed one goal in pursuit of another one when you really want to keep them both going, right? So 
again, in the idea of a relationship. If you have a new relationship or, or, or you're looking for a new relationship, how can you set it up in the sense that um, the relationship you are focusing on currently doesn't doesn't really sacrifice the other relationships around you. And look at that. This happens a lot with new friend groups, um, You know, definitely when you're dating somebody. Uh, so just look at what's going on in those relationships and how can you keep them accountable. And not accountable, but how can you keep yourself accountable to make sure you don't dip. So I love going after another goal, love growth, but don't do it at a detriment of a previous goal. So it may take more time, it may not, but it may. But make sure you're actually um, really going after that in a smart and intelligent way that makes sense, that allows you to keep scaling yourself, right? So write out your five to thrive, write in each category and just be introspective and look, where is it that I'm possibly uh, going after goal number two or business number three or four, but at the detriment to the other businesses? Because the same rules apply to business as they apply to your relationships, uh, as they apply to your body, your mind, as well as your soul. That's it for me today. Hope you're having a fantastic day. As always, go over to authorofyourownstory.com, get more tips, tricks, techniques, as well as insights delivered right to your inbox. Look forward to hearing from you. As always, go out and inspire somebody else by being the author of your own story. I hope you enjoyed today's daily growth hacks. Please put your comments right down below and remember to click subscribe. This way we can ensure that we're delivering these daily growth hacks right to you each and every day. On behalf of the whole team here, remember, go out and be the author of your own story.